I call the members to order, and it's a great pleasure to announce, in accordance with Standing Order 26.75, that the Public Health Wales Act was given royal assent yesterday. The first item on our agenda is questions to the First Minister. First question, David Rees. A statement on the discussions held between the Welsh Government and the Ministry of Justice in relation to the site of a new prison in Bagram. Well, the Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Children has had discussions with the UK's Prisons Minister regarding the proposed site of a development of a new prison at uh, Baglin, and Welsh Government officials are also having ongoing discussions with Ministry of Justice officials regarding the proposal. I thank you for that answer, First Minister. But as you know, the site that's been identified by the MOJ is within the ownership of the Welsh Government and lies next door to a housing estate, a residential care home, a, a GP resource centre with four surgeries in there and other businesses on that industrial estate. It also lies within the Enterprise Zone, which was established when the threat to Tata raised last year, and the intention being to grow and invest in businesses. Now, I don't believe that a prison would actually encourage that. For these businesses to grow, they actually want more space. They need a larger units of 10,000 square feet plus. I've met with local businesses, and they want to grow. They want to stay. But if they see a prison coming, damaging their growth opportunities, they have told me they will leave at all, but and possibly even Wales. Will the Welsh Government reject any bid from the MOJ for that land and instead invest in building these units, which can allow them to grow and commit itself to that as done elsewhere in Wales? Uh, well, the, the prison itself will create 500 uh, local jobs and generate £11 million in revenue for the local economy. Could I uh, reassure uh, my uh, colleague that as someone who has a prison in his, in his constituency and who was the ward councillor, uh, when the prison was being built in, in my ward at the time, that there were concerns at the time, no question about it, but those concerns were never realised. We didn't lose investment. In fact, a brand new housing estate is being built almost up to the prison perimeter at the moment, and those houses are being sold. So whereas people will inevitably have concerns about something new in the area, uh, what we know from, uh, not just from Bridgend, but elsewhere uh, in Wales, is that prisons do generate uh, jobs, uh, and ultimately, of course, uh, they don't have an, a negative effect on the local economy or, or town. Bethan Jenkins. I'm following on from that theme. Last week, um, in a question that I asked the Cabinet Secretary, um, I said, why did you let uh, this, uh, the land go forward for consideration to be used for the prison? The Cabinet Secretary said, and I quote, the member's incorrect in her assertion that I had an option in terms of the land issue regarding the prison. Could you please clarify this? Did you offer up those, that piece of land to the MOJ to consider? If you did not, how has it come about um, where a piece of Welsh Government land is being considered in the first place? If it is a earmark for potential other usage. Why has it not been earmarked for that use before now for businesses locally, as David Rees has said? And can you confirm that you would be looking at other options in relation to this particular location? Yeah, yeah. I'd also like to ask you, um, I've had an email from a member of Cardiff, uh, staff of Cardiff Prison, who said the staff have already been told that Cardiff Prison is going to be closed for shopping development and that Swansea Prison is going to be uh, closed wow. also. Can you confirm this, or have you had any conversations with the MOJ with regards to this? No, we haven't had any conversations along those lines. If she's got that email, I'd very much, if she feels able to share it, I'd very much uh, like to, uh, to see it. Uh, I'm not sure whether she's against the prison uh, or whether she has other questions, but from our perspective, uh, we know the prison can generate, as I said, 500 jobs, and I speak as somebody with a prison in my constituency. It had no detrimental effect at all uh, on the immediate area or indeed on the town of Bridgend or indeed on, uh, on investment. Uh, we know that a prison is needed, uh, another modern prison is needed in the south of uh, Wales. There's no getting away uh, from that. But of course it's hugely important to work with uh, local people and businesses in order to reassure them based on what I've seen with my own eyes in Bridgend. Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, the Ministry of Justice have indicated that they'll be holding a two-day um, event in Port Talbot in order to garner the people's views on the new prison prior to submitting a formal planning application. While this is welcome, we need a more complete public consultation on the proposals. What discussions has your government had with the MOJ um, about a more detailed public consultation? And what role will the Welsh Government play in seeking residents' views on the new prison? Well, ultimately, the final decision on the exact location of any prison is a matter for the Ministry of Justice and not for Welsh Government. It's now, of course, a matter for the UK Government to seek planning permission. It's in the UK Government's interest to make sure that there is full 
consultation locally. You can't give people too much information. I, I remember uh, what happened in 1995-96 when the park prison was built in Bridgend. People did have, did have a lot of uh, questions. Uh, those questions were uh, dealt with by way of a public consultation. Uh, and of course, we, uh, we see ourselves 20 years on, not with the teething troubles, I have to say, when the prison was opened, uh, but 20 years on, the prison is, is accepted as part of the community and, and has created uh, hundreds of jobs. Question, die. Question two, Nick Ramsey. Yeah. What plans does the First Minister have to recognise the additional challenges of delivering public services in rural areas in the distribution of local government funding? Well, the core funding provided to Welsh local authorities each year is distributed according to relative need. The formula is agreed with the local government through the Partnership Council for Wales, and it takes account of a wide range of factors. Uh, thank you, First Minister, for that answer. Uh, as you know, a large percentage of Wales' area, uh, area is rural. Uh, I remain particularly concerned that the Welsh Government has not gone quite far enough in recognising rurality in its funding of local authorities over the last few years. Delivering services such as social care in a rural setting is always going to face additional costs when compared to an urban authority, and the same applies to other services provided by councils as well. Will you undertake to revisit the local government funding formula to see if greater weighting can be given to rurality over the years ahead? We look at the, uh, if I can use the word, rankings for local authorities. Denbyshire's allocation is the fourth highest. Gwynedd is ninth. Carmarthenshire is tenth. Ceredigion fourteenth. Powys fifteenth. Pembrokeshire seventeenth. In comparison, Swansea is sixteenth. Flintshire nineteenth. And Cardiff is twentieth. It would seem to me that rurality is taken into account. And the reality is, of course, it's a matter for local authorities uh, to agree amongst themselves uh, what the uh, what, what they wish the funding formula to look like, rather than one authority uh, wanting to change it without the support of others. Joyce Watson. Uh, we all know, um, First Minister, that the only way that you can deliver any public services is through the staff. And there's evidence uh, come out this week that uh, the public sector pay cut and freeze over the past decade is such that now teachers' pay has fallen by £3 an hour, uh, police officers by £2 an hour, and uh, nurses' wages have absolutely stagnated and the result of that at the moment on the nursing profession particularly is that we are now seeing at 51 percent leaving that public sector service um, over the last four years so do you agree with me first minister that the tory public sector pay freeze is now risking our public service delivery Absolutely, I do. Uh, the time has come to ditch the public sector pay cap. Uh, we need to make sure that public sector workers are paid properly for the job that they do. I do not accept uh, that there is some kind of financial restraint uh, at play here, given the fact that a billion pounds was found as part of a bung for Northern Ireland. If it can be found for Northern Ireland, the money can be found for our public sector workers. Simon Thomas. Uh, Thank you, Chloe. Well, one of the specific challenges in rural areas is dealing with older people and people with dementia, both older people and others who have dementia, and that's a challenge that has become very apparent during the recent general election, of course, and this is encapsulated in the debate that's currently ongoing on the future of Catrepod Londeb in Aberystwyth, which serves North Ceredigion and Mid Wales to a great extent, and I'm sure that the First Minister would join with me in saying that the consultation started on Monday, so there is an opportunity now for people to express their views as part of that consultation, but will the government, through the minister, have discussions with Keredig Young Council, particularly around some of the new possibilities that the government is providing through extra care beds or extra care homes to see if there are possibilities of fitting what happens with the future of Bodlondeb into the broader pattern serving Mid Wales? Well, of course, this is a matter for Keredigion. I did allude to Bodlondeb last week in the chamber here. But, of course, the government is perfectly happy to collaborate with local authorities to see what other methods of delivering a service may be available in their areas. And, of course, that is true of Keredigion and true of every other authority. The First Minister will be aware that yesterday I published a development pla economic development plan for rural Wales Thank you very much. Uh, what assurances can the First Minister give me that the recommendations endorsed by a group of experts from rural Wales will be uh, considered in the context of the new economic strategy for Wales? 
Well, could I thank uh, my, uh, my friend Lynn Morgan for the work that she has done and uh, the deep interest she takes in uh, rural communities across uh, Wales. We know that rural Wales will have specific challenges, particularly with regard to uh, Brexit. We welcome, as a government, the publication of the, uh, the report, and it will form part of um, the strategy that we have to uh, deliver further for rural Wales in the next few years post-Brexit. Questions now from the party leaders. Plaid Cymru leader, Leanne Wood. First Minister, the governments in England and Scotland have announced that they will act to provide free access to abortion services for women from the north of Ireland. Will Wales follow suit? Yes, yes that's what we want to do. We're looking at the detail of how that can be done, uh, but we want to make sure that the same service is on offer uh, in Wales as it is in England and Scotland. There are issues such as, for example, uh, travel costs. Uh, issues such as how do you provide ongoing care following a procedure rather than people just going home. Uh, these things have been considered at the moment, but I can assure the Leader of Plaid Cymru that what we're looking to do is to make sure that Wales, England and Scotland offer the same service. I welcome your answer, First Minister, so thank you very much for that. Faced with this uh, Westminster Government that is committed to austerity, Wales needs a, a Government now that is proactive uh, on health. Almost 30,000 Welsh nurses have seen a 14% cut in their wages since 2010 due to the NHS pay cap. On page 56 of your manifesto, you say that you will scrap the NHS pay cap. The Scottish Government has announced that it will get rid of the pay cap in its next budget. And all I've seen from the Welsh Government is a letter to Jeremy Hunt. The UK Government has effectively rejected that letter and is now committed to that pay cap. It's time now, uh, First Minister, for you to take action. Why haven't you yet announced any plans to lift the pay cap and will you make it a priority in your next budget? We want to lift the uh, pay cap. There are financial implications that we believe should be met by the Westminster Government. Uh, I don't know what their view is, if I'm honest, uh, with the leader of Plaid Cymru on the pay cap. I've heard different views from different ministers at different times. It shows the lack of leadership that exists in uh, Westminster. She and I are in exactly the same position in wanting to see an end to the pay cap. Uh, we will continue to press the UK government for more resources, and we, consider, we will consider what we can do financially in order to move forward with that. If it's that much of a priority, First Minister, you should be able to commit to this today. We've got a, a Labour government in Wales, we've got 28 Welsh Labour MPs, and the NHS pay cap still <laughs> remains. You might be happy to blame others in terms of the Westminster budgetary constraints, but you could be taking action today to protect workers, NHS uh, nurses, uh, and NHS staff in Wales. The whole point, the whole point of devolution is to pursue a different way, a better way. And you could have made a clear commitment today to look at where that funding could come from in the next budget. So your lack of action begs the question, what is the point of Labour if you're not able to protect Welsh workers? First Minister... Can, can, I, can I please hear uh, the Leader of Plaid Cymru and can I hear less of ministers in the government and allow the First Minister to hear the question? Yeah. Thank you, uh, presiding officer. I'll give you one more chance to come clean on this now. Do you have any regrets about implementing Tory austerity? And when will you commit to lifting the NHS pay cap? Well, the leader of Plaid Cymru asked what the point of Labour is. I can remind her we have 28 MPs and her party has four. Uh, that, is the, uh, that is the point of Labour. People have faith in Welsh Labour. We saw that in the general election campaign. They keep on saying, do this, do that. Well, people aren't listening to them. She and I are in the same position in terms of the public sector pay cap. Surely, surely there are two things she must, she must agree with. Firstly, that the first protocol must be to secure the money from Westminster. Surely we don't, we don't give up on that. Uh, and that is something that we need to uh, pursue. Secondly, surely she doesn't expect us to make a decision on the hoof without examining all the potential costs. Uh, and that is something... Well, she, the, the, the Llywydd, rightly stopped people heckling the leader of Plaid Cymru. She could do the same for me. Uh, as I said, uh, this is something that we want to, uh, to take forward. But the first port of call is to say to the UK government, you found the money for Northern Ireland, now you find the money for Wales. 
Leader of the Opposition, Andrew R. T. Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First First Minister, last week, obviously, the Government took the uh, decision not to back the Circuit of Wales uh, development at the heads of the valleys in Blaine Gwent. Um, One of the proposals that was put forward uh, was obviously the development of a technology park, an automotive technology park, that potentially could create 1,500 jobs over its lifespan. Uh, The Enterprise Zone has been in existence in Blaine Gwent for over five years now. In its first four years, it created 172 jobs, and in the last year the figures are available for, it managed to create a mere eight jobs. What confidence can you give that this technology park that you're proposing will actually generate the jobs that you say it will generate, 1,500, when your enterprise zone that has been going for five years hasn't even generated 200 jobs? Can I, before I answer uh, the question, offer my sympathies as well to the leader of the Welsh Conservatives and indeed um, uh, his group uh, and the family, fiancé, friends and colleagues of Ben Davis, uh, a tragic uh, event that we saw in, in Greece. So, first of all, could I express my... Uh, sympathies uh, with regard to what happened to Ben. We all rely on our staff and it was a deeply tragic incident for such a, a young man. Uh, the simple answer to this question is £100 million. Uh, we're going to put £100 million into the uh, technology park. We've talked to businesses to assess the, uh, the level of, of demand. Uh, bear in mind, of course, that this formed part of the circuit scheme technology park. It was something that, that, that was uh, mooted as part of that scheme. Uh, we feel that it can be taken forward and having taken soundings from businesses and the need to invest, of course, in skills, uh, that this is something that, can, that we can support. One of the issues that we have faced in the heads of the valleys uh, for some years is investors saying that there are no buildings for them uh, to, uh, to go into. A speculative building is not something we want to encourage, but this is based on what businesses themselves have been saying to us. On that basis, we're confident the jobs can be created. Uh, thank you, First Minister, for your uh, remarks about the tragic death of our Deputy Chief of Staff, Ben Davis. Um, politically, we are divided in this chamber, and that's what this chamber is for debate and discussion. But actually, the human spirit unites us all. And from a party perspective and a group perspective, and from Ben's family's perspective, I'd like to thank all the members who have expressed their condolences and wishes uh, to be passed on to the family in the support that they will need in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Uh, they've gone from being in a position of planning a wedding uh, to arranging a funeral Uh, and that really does put everything in perspective uh, when we focus on what we debate and discuss within this chamber Uh, but if I could go back to my line of question if I may first minister uh, I do take the point that the alternative offer that the Welsh Government have put on the table of this hundred million pounds over ten years and the opportunity to open up the door for 1500 jobs uh, in this alternative offer uh, is most probably sincerely made by the Welsh Government but the evidence that uh, the Circuit of Wales pointed to was that actually in their extensive discussions and you referred to this in your answer to me in their extensive discussions about the development of a technology park based on the automotive industry you would need a track for testing and that opportunity for testing for to be coterminous with the technology park to be successful. Time and time again, we have seen public accounts committee reports and scrutiny reports about the build it and they will come mentality of previous governments having failed and considerable sums of public money being put on the table and actually thinking the money will solve the problem. How can you have this confidence this time round when the evidence points to the fact that actually you have to have the two working together to make the technology park a success in an area that desperately needs that success to create quality employment opportunities? We have had discussions with businesses, particularly those in the automotive sector, and they have said to us that the circuit is not required to move forward with the technology park. It's an something that would be nice to have but not essential to have. I think if I have represented in that way, I think it's a fair representation. But certainly the development of the technology park, in their view, is not dependent on the development of a circuit. What is absolutely crucial is that we secure uh, the, uh, the jobs in the technology park and protect uh, the public purse. That's uh, hugely uh, important and that's exactly what we've done in taking this decision. Will you therefore then, First Minister, make public uh, all the evidence that you've based your decision on, the £100 million investment and the due diligence that you, as the government most probably, uh, or I hope, have undertaken, uh, the ability to have confidence that that 1,500 jobs figure will be reached, uh, so that in two, three, four years' time we are not looking back at a big shed that is empty 
and these job opportunities lost to that particular area of Wales. As I've said, and I sincerely mean it, I hope the jobs come, but if you look at the track record of the five years of the Enterprise Park, Enterprise Zone, sorry, which was an automotive Enterprise Zone, I might add, uh, you haven't managed to create 200 jobs in that area, uh, and in the last year figures available, only eight jobs have been created despite all the incentives of the Enterprise Zone. So will you therefore make public the evidence that you have based your decision on to sanction £100 million worth of investment and the feasibility in the figure that you've put forward of 1,500 jobs being created? We will make available uh, all that can be made available, subject to commercial confidentiality discussions, of course, with, with other businesses. But I think it's right uh, with this uh, decision and this project that as much information is in the public domain as possible. We're not afraid of that. Uh, and certainly uh, it is something that we are uh, considering. How can we get as much information into the uh, public domain? We saw some emerging today in an unfortunate manner, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, the information is there for members and for members of the public. Leader of the UKIP Group, Neil Hamilton. I'd like to continue this line of questioning with the First Minister, if I may. Um, is it not a tragedy that the Circuit of Wales project appears to have been strangled, not because of any credible doubts about the viability of the racetrack project, because there was nothing in the Cabinet Secretary's statement to that effect, but because of a technical internal accounting device by Her Majesty's Treasury and the Office for National Statistics? Uh, shouldn't we look through the form of the accounts to the substance of the projects and entirely uh, uh, private sector funded project up front. All that the Welsh Government was asked for was a guarantee for which they would be paid £3 million a year. Uh, it was secured on the assets which are to be constructed because the guarantee doesn't even begin until the construction phase is completed and that 100% of the assets were available to secure what was a loan of less than 50% of the funding. So on the face of it, that appears to be pretty good security. Uh, and is there not a way through this, even at this late stage, that we could continue to look at the possibility of untying the Gordian knot with the Treasury and see if there is an imaginative solution to this in accounting terms, which would enable the private sector money to be put in, which on balance I think would be better than for the Welsh Government to have to commit its own money up front, which is now what is proposed. The issue is this, isn't it? it the problem has always been that uh, if this project... Uh, had strong support from private investors, it wouldn't need a guarantee from the government, and it would, it would be able to stand on its own two feet without that guarantee. Uh, as we said in the chamber last week, the difficulty that we have faced is the, uh, n that no final decision will be given by the ONS or Eurostat as to whether uh, this financial deal will be on or off the balance sheet uh, until the contracts are signed, by which case it's too late and of course, at that point, uh, we are in a position where uh, in two years, three years' time, if the circuit didn't work out, we, we, the guarantee is called on. Uh, that is the problem with this. Now, we cannot take that risk. Uh, we know that uh, we, can't, we would not get a final decision from them. The fact that, as the deal is currently structured, uh, it does not appear to have met our conditions. If a new proposal comes forward, then of course we'd, uh, we, we'd examine it. Uh, but we cannot take the risk with, uh, with public money and take the risk of this money appearing on our balance sheet. If that were to happen, uh, we would be treated as if we had already paid that money over and the money would be cut from our capital budget, which would mean, for example, potentially having to make cuts in this financial year. Now, that's not something that we as, as a responsible government can take a risk with. I fully understand that point, and that, of course, was included in the original statement. But <laughs> the, the idea that a, a, a project which would be funded privately to the tune of 375 million pounds, a guarantee on the part of the Welsh Government, which would cover less than half of that, could be put on the Welsh Government's uh, books uh, as entirely a public sector project. It's self-evidently ridiculous, uh, and therefore there, there must be a way through this. Uh, the Welsh Government <coughs> guarantee would never be called upon up front uh, 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 in any event uh, under the terms of the deal, because it's an annual amount which the Government would be obliged to pay in the worst case scenario that you know, the assets were built, that the racetrack itself never made a penny of, uh, of profits so as to pay the interest to the uh, investors of Viva in this particular instance, and then the, the government would be called upon on an annual basis to pay that element of the guarantee to them. Uh, you will never be called upon to provide £210 million in a single 
lump sum, and the £8 million worst case guarantee is amortised over a period of 35 years. I mean, it's absolutely preposterous that these government accounting conventions should be used for a straight a project which would utterly transform the whole of South East Wales. And surely the Welsh Government ought to exert itself, strain every sinew to try and find a way through. And we cannot ignore the reality uh, of the fact that there is a high risk in our judgment that we would see £373 million lost to the Welsh capital budget. Uh, that is something that cannot be, that no responsible government could ignore. I come back to the point. If the project was able to stand on its own, this is not a government project. This is a project that's come forward from a private consortium. The question that, that, that has never been answered is why the project can't stand on its own two feet. Uh, if it is deemed to be that successful by the private investors, then, then you know, people will ask the question why that is. We have worked, of course, with the, uh, with the business. They've brought forward several schemes uh, over the past few years, and we've tried to help them in any way, but they did not meet our conditions uh, that we, uh, we set down. We've examined uh, all the risks, and it's quite clear uh, that the risks are too high to proceed with this scheme. But not too high, apparently, to uh, conjure up £100 million out of the back pocket uh, as, uh, as a reaction to this failure. Uh, and if it's possible to find £100 million up front, effectively now, why is it impossible to find £8 million a year from two to, or th three years' time to, for the following 30 years? Surely, I repeat the question, with an ounce of imagination, there must be a way through this, and, and the Welsh Government would have the united support, I think, of all the parties in this assembly behind it to make this project succeed. Surely the prize is too great to give up at this stage. It is the responsibility of the circuit to bring forward any new proposal of the Welsh Government. This is not a Welsh Government scheme. Uh, the circuit were given conditions that they had to, uh, to meet. They did not meet those, those conditions uh, when we looked at the, uh, at the due uh, diligence. Uh, he says £100 million out of the back pocket is £100 million over 10 years. So not suddenly £100 million in the space of one year. Uh, that is the commitment that we make to Ebbo Vale uh, to bring the jobs to the uh, technology park. And we are confident, having spoken to businesses, uh, that uh, that technology park will be a success. Question three, John. Question three, John Griffiths. Will the First Minister make a statement on progress with local government reform in Wales? Yes, as I said in my statement on the uh, legislative programme on the 27th of June, we will introduce a local government bill in the second year of our programme to reform local government. First Minister, local authorities deliver key services to our community, so it's vitally important that we have a thriving local democracy. A fundamental requirement of that is local authorities that reflect their local populations. But the most recent local elections delivered something like 28% of our councils across Wales um, in terms of women councillors, with individual local authorities ranging from something like 10% to 40%. So we do need to make progress. Would you agree with me that one important aspect of making necessary progress is to have strong role models amongst our female councillors in Wales? And so would you also join me in welcoming the re-election of Debbie Wilcox to lead Newport City Council and his subsequent election to lead the Welsh Local Government Association and so lead local government in Wales. Yes, I do very much uh, welcome uh, Debbie's uh, election. Uh, she is the first of many, I hope, because we can't say uh, that local government representatives are truly representative of the entire community in Wales. Uh, we are a long way from being able to say that. I can say prior to the local elections, we run a number of projects as part of the Diversity and Democracy programme. 51 individuals from underrepresented groups participated in the uh, programme and 16 of them stood as candidates in the local government elections this uh, May. So some progress, but true to say, much, much progress uh, needs to, uh, to, to happen yet. Jonathan Finch Saunders. Yeah. First Minister, the Future Generations Act is referenced widely within uh, the Local Government Reform White Paper, and it is abundantly clear that this particular Act provides us with a superb opportunity to contribute towards successful reform of local government. Tackling poverty is also a key theme within that Act. Given the timing of the cessation of Communities First, and in line with local authority reform, what consideration have you made to include a poverty reduction stream in those changes going forward? 
Well, as part of the, uh, the, the local government bill that we will introduce, we will, of course, uh, and this is no secret, look at ensuring that uh, local authorities work together uh, on a regional basis in order to deliver services for the people that they, uh, that they represent. I'm sure local authorities would accept that poverty reduction is, of course, a hugely important uh, role that they are able to, uh, to play. Uh, and, of course, they will uh, be able to, to do that, uh, working together across a wider area. Sean Gwenllian. There's been a great deal of emphasis on collaboration between councils at the regional level in the Welsh Government's white paper, Resilience and Renewal. Plaid Cymru is eager to see the four western counties of Wales working strategically on issues which are unique to West Wales and arise from that unique knitting of the rural economy, housing planning and the Welsh language. Now, we could enhance on that to create a region or an assembly for the West which would work alongside the city regions. Now, as Elinid Morgan notes, the government here does need to support rural Wales, but the creation of a new commissioner isn't the most efficient way of doing that, in my view. Do you agree that encouraging collaboration between the westerly counties does provide an initial solution which is cost effective and practical as well as being sensible. Yes, I do, and it's all important that that does happen. And the aim of the um, bill, and we always use the word messed in uh, Welsh, so with, is that, that that does happen because we've been looking at the education consortia model and we've seen that things have improved year on year uh, when you see the LEAs working together and of course that's what we want to build on in looking at the legislation. Question four, Mark Isherwood. Will the First Minister state make a statement on access to tobacco products in Wales? Yes, young people's access to tobacco products has been successfully reduced as a result of legislation and the Public Health Wales Act, the seal of which I applied yesterday, provides further safeguards with the introduction of a retail register and an offence of handing over tobacco products to those under 18. Uh, thank you for that. Well, the 2016 Tobacco Manufacturers Association Anti-Illicit Trade Survey found that 62% of Welsh smokers purchased non-duty-paid tobacco uh, products. Uh, the financial rewards of this illicit trade are high. The penalties are low. Uh, this is threatening one in eight uh, corner shops uh, in Wales and across the UK. And most worryingly, people don't understand the added health risks of this type uh, of tobacco. What consideration has your government given alone, or perhaps working with the HMRC, uh, to tackle this? It, it is a matter ultimately for the HMRC to deliver any breaches of, uh, uh, to enforce rather, any breaches of uh, excise uh, law. Uh, that is not a reason to uh, lower taxes, obviously, on tobacco. The member is not, not suggesting that, in fairness uh, to him. Uh, but it is hugely important that people are able to provide intelligence to the enforcement agencies. Uh, and, of course, I know the checks uh, are carried out at, at the airports, uh, particularly from areas that are seen as areas of risk when it comes to Im importing um, uh, tobacco and cigarettes, particularly uh, from jurisdictions where uh, the prices are very, very uh, low. But obviously we seek to work with HMRC uh, in order to uh, reduce and eliminate smuggling. Rhiannon Pasmo. Yeah. Dear First Minister, in 2015, small shops and retailers fell into line with large businesses, with it being illegal for them to display cigarettes and tobacco in public. At the time, the Health and Social Services Minister, Mark Drakeford, stated smoking still causes around 5,450 deaths in Wales each year. Around half of all regular smokers will die prematurely from smoking-related illnesses, and that's why we will continue to work tirelessly to reduce smoking levels to 16% by 2020. First Minister, what progress is being made to hit that 2020 target and what challenges do we face to meet it and what further action can the Welsh Government take to fulfil our aim? Well, the uh, Tobacco Control Delivery Plan will be published later this year. That will ensure that action remains targeted to achieve our goal of reducing adult smoking prevalence to 16% by 2020 and it will outline a number of measures to reduce smoking further. Uh, to prevent young people from taking it up in the first place, to improve cessation support as well, uh, and of course to further denormalise tobacco use. Question Pimp. Question five, Jeremy Miles. What steps are being taken by the Welsh Government to tackle greenhouse gas emissions? We are supporting specific actions in our transition to a low carbon economy, such as deploying renewable energy and increasing recycling. 
We are also establishing the longer term framework to meet our legislative target within the Environment Act of reducing emissions by 80% by 2050. Thank you, First Minister. You know that the Climate Change Committee has just published a report last week um, evaluating the performance of the UK and the devolved nations against their environmental targets and noting improvements in Wales in the waste and industrial sectors, but in noting an increase in emissions from business premises, homes and transport. Now, on the basis of this performance, they say it's likely that Wales will not attain the target of 40 percent reduction in emissions by 2020 and that action needs to be taken as a matter of urgency. Does the government accept that assessment and what specific steps will the government take on the basis of the committee's report? Yes, and of course the greater source of emissions is the energy sector itself. And so what we need to ensure is that more renewable energy is available, for example, in the lagoon in uh, Swansea Bay and also of course that we should be able to generate or create jobs in Wales from that so we're still waiting to see what the UK government will decide on the Swansea Lagoon. First Minister at NRW's report tree cover in Wales's towns and cities found that 1% of all tree cover is found in areas of high density housing and the Welsh Government's own report local air quality management in Wales identified increasing tree cover as key to improving uh, general well-being uh, and reducing greenhouse gases and uh, uh, improving air quality. Uh, are you committed to seeing a significant increase in the amount of urban woodland we have? Yes, people welcome woodland. They welcome broadleaf woodland particularly. I remember my days as Rural Affairs Minister, one of the, one of the issues that used to exercise people was uh, clear felling uh, and the, uh, what they saw as the scars that were left on mountainsides as a result. Uh, we know that there is more work to be done in terms of increasing the, uh, the amount of tree cover in Wales, and we are working with NRW to facilitate that. Simon Thomas. Uh, Thank you, Chloe. Although it's true, and the First Minister has to say, in terms of heavy industry and energy generation in Wales, it's also true to say that the poor condition of our housing stock is also adding to carbon emissions, as well as the difficult transport situation that we face in Wales. And the sad fact is that whatever we have as targets, then more carbon emissions per capita in Wales now than there were 10 years ago and they've reduced in Scotland and in England now. You do have the tools to deal with this in the Environment Act. You set out that you will secure carbon budgeting and during the next year you will have to prepare for that. Will you give a commitment therefore that the first government carbon budget will set out how you will reduce emissions? Well, one thing that I can tell the members is that we're not re going to reconsider that target because the focus now is to ensure that we take action on that target and to consider which regulations will be required in order to achieve that. As regards how we proceed, of course we wish to ensure that we proceed with regulations on the carbon budgets and we have to consider what the correct levels of doing that would be. And, of course, those levels will be established on evidence emanating from the consul consultative body. Six, Mike Hedges. Statement, the importance of sporting success in promoting Wales to the world. It plays a rich part in our culture and tradition. We're almost a year on from the Euros, which did more than, I suppose, any politician could have done in raising Wales' profile uh, around Europe and the, uh, the world. And, yes, uh, one of the things we sometimes forget is, at a time in the 19th century, when we had very little else to show as a nation, uh, sport played a huge part in developing modern Wales and giving people a sense of nationhood. Mm. It was in 1905 uh, that a national anthem was first sung at any sporting event anywhere in the world at the Wales and New Zealand Games. So hugely important, not just in terms of uh, adding to our culture, but of course as an economic driver, particularly in Swansea. Can I thank the First Minister for that response? Uh, I think we all, all, all I think so most of us really enjoyed Wales' uh, success last year at the wow. Euros <laughs> and that uh, we really did see Wales being promoted as a major player in uh, Europe because of it. Uh, I, 
I think it is, of course, crucial as Sport Wales also realises the importance of, of professional sport in Wales. Does the First Minister agree with me regarding Swansea City and the importance of Premiership football for promoting Swansea and Wales? 38 Premiership games a year shown on television throughout the world with the word Swansea being mentioned. That, that is that the best publicity Swansea or Wales gets from anywhere. And is, the, and is, is the uh, First Minister also very pleased that Swansea is spending yet another uh, season in the Premiership? Well, the simple answer is yes. I don't think I can go much uh, beyond that, but uh, my friend Mike Hedges is absolutely right to say uh, how important uh, Swansea City is as a as a brand for the city of Swansea as well, and we've worked through Visit Wales with the club since 2011 to increase the profile of the club and, and of course, the profile of Wales. Mohammed Ashka. Presiding officer, uh, after Mike Hedges, is exactly the same. You know, the tremendous effect, the success of our national team, football team, in reaching the semi-finals in Euro 2016, we had in promoting Wales in the world. Now, I think the cricket is also the sport which is commonly played among Commonwealth countries. And some of the countries which are much smaller than Wales are representing in the world stage and flying their flag in the cricket fields all over the globe. Why can't, First Minister, we, don't, we agree on this time now that the time has come for us, Wales, to have its own cricket team to represent Wales in the world stage. Oh, I, this is an issue that uh, I've, I've certainly supported in the past. Certainly a one-day team. Uh, so a limit, you know, not, not a test team. I don't think we, we are playing close to that, that level. But it is odd that we see Ireland and Scotland playing uh, in uh, international tournaments and not Wales. We did have a one-day team at one point uh, for a few years. I know, I know there are concerns in Glamorgan because of the financial advantage they get being part of the, the England and Wales cricket board, as is sometimes uh, forgotten about. But... Um, yeah, from my perspective, I'd, I'd very much like to see us represented uh, internationally uh, at cricket, as long as, of course, there's no financial hit on Glamorgan and their ability to play at the highest level. Neil McAvoy. If, um, look, first of all, I would say, unfortunately, I think Mike Hedges was right, actually, about Swansea. But uh, to, 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 be, to be, as a Cardiff City fan, it is. But uh, to, to be serious, though, I've had a lot of complaints from uh, constituents that they don't feel that we support cycling enough in Wales. Uh, Gerard Thomas has just been the first Welshman to ever wear the yellow jersey, and I, I would hope you would congratulate him on that formally. And I would just like to know what, what is your government doing to promote cycling more? We've had events, of course, being held in, in Wales. This is the Tour of Britain, if I remember. I remember being in, in Caerphilly, uh, watching it as it crossed Caerphilly uh, Mountain. We have, of course, the velodrome in Newport, which is a, a very a good facility uh, for people to be able to use. And the fact that we have had success in uh, international cycling, uh, Geraint Thomas, of course, at the moment, Nicole Cook and others in the past shows that we do have the facilities in place uh, to promote uh, cycling. Uh, and we know, of course, that cycling, again, is one of those sports that is uh, an elite sport at international level, but is a hugely important activity in terms of in improving people's health uh, when they are, they are cycling for recreation. Question Scythe, have indeed. Question seven, Heaven Dave. What work has the Welsh Government undertaken to implement the recommendations of the Ministerial Supply Model Task Force report published on the 2nd of February 2017? Well, a working group has been established to take forward the recommendations contained in the Task Force's report. That includes support for professional learning opportunities for supply and uh, NQTs and the development of a programme to support and build capacity in the system via school cluster arrangements. Uh, one of the uh, issues raised by the report was the variable, inconsistent and uh, complex picture of supply teaching. Um, I was pleased to see that the Cabinet Secretary uh, picked up the, uh, the, all ten recommendations, although she did recognise that care must be taken with regulating standards um, uh, uh, of commercial supply agencies. Um, I've got a constituent who is a supply teacher who has written to me, and she tells me that uh, she's employed through an agency who detect, deduct a third of her salary um, before she uh, takes it home. Um, she also feels that uh, supply teaching should be uh, both recruited and employed by local authorities and uh, or by consortia. Um, that's her view. Can the First Minister confirm that the government is, uh, take, as, as he's indicated, taking forward these recommendations and will press ahead with them in, imminently, but also what can be done with regard to regulating agencies um, and achieving parity of esteem between supply teachers and their full-time equivalents. 
Uh, this will become easier when teachers' paying conditions are devolved, but it is right to say that I, I've heard it myself in my own constituency about people complaining about agency fees uh, that are paid. There's no requirement, as far as I can see, that local authorities have to go through an agency. It's just that they choose to go through an agency, nor are they required to go through a particular, particular agency, nor are school heads uh, necessarily. So I think it is important that local authorities examine the way in which supply teachers are provided in their areas, even though it's a matter, I believe, for school heads rather than local authorities, to make sure that school heads themselves understand that there are options available to them when it comes to recruiting supply staff. Mark Reckless. Uh, can the First Minister give an assurance that no school that has a successful model for them of uh, supply cover will have that replaced by a top-down model applied across all schools, uh, whether in Wales or by local authority? Well, the, the, uh, it has to be fair, of course, to these uh, supply uh, teachers. A, a successful model will be one where uh, teaching staff uh, are available to a school, but where teaching staff are treated fairly uh, as well. Uh, that, to me, is a, a successful model. Uh, where th those models exist, there seems to be no reason to change them. Adam Price. Uh, Ian or, or uh, Shomadik? One of the great disappointments when the minister's written response to the report was published was that the government at the time wasn't able to give any lead on the two recommendations which were most far-reaching in providing a solution to this situation, namely regulating the private sector, as having David mentioned, in terms of improving standards, but also creating a regional system for direct employment. And the government had pledged to come back with a response once more work had been completed on those two points. Is the government in a position to publish that response now? With regard to the regional footprint, we're moving on with that. I can confirm that to ensure that that does happen. With regard to dealing with business in the private sector, of course, there are issues that cross into the area that haven't been devolved. So at present, we are considering how far we can go with that. Thank you, First Minister. The next item on the agenda is the business statement.